Mr. Bond. We've been expecting you. Um, I'm in charge of holding the puppy today to keep it, um, to keep her from, to, from peeing on everything. So, um, that's what I'm doing. Um, today we are making Animal Crossing themed, uh, polymer clay female earrings. Um, while I do a voiceover of some Animal Crossing lore. Um, so, uh, voiceover me is going to take you into that now and, uh, say bye bye, Benye. Say bye bye. Oh my gosh. When playing Nintendo's renowned Animal Crossing titles such as Animal Crossing City Folk, Animal Crossing New Leaf, and Animal Crossing New Horizons, players can dig into a deep backstory of some of the favorite characters of the franchise, the Able Sisters. Quick rundown for anyone who needs it. The oldest and youngest Able Sisters, Sable and Mabel respectively, run a clothing shop in your town selling the player's shirts, pants, hats, etc. In each rendition of the franchise, you are graded by Mabel as you enter the store with her perky and generally excited demeanor. You can then run to the back of the shop and try to hold a conversation with quiet, reserved Sable. Sable is usually found working stitching a pattern or a piece of clothing. After trying to talk to her over the span of many days, Sable will warm up to the player and drop hints about the sister's history and backstory. For all those wondering where Label is up to this point, players can usually find her working in Gracie Grayson City Folk and New Leaf and as a traveling designer consult in New Horizons. Talking with Sable is where the sister's history is uncovered. Living a humble yet content life with their parents in your town many years ago, the first disruption to strike is the passing of their parents. This leads eldest Sable into raising Label and Mabel by herself, presumably the cause of her quiet and reserved disposition she has today. To make matters worse, Sable gets into a fight with Label, for undisclosed reasons, and Label leaves the family and heads to the city to work for fashion designer Gracie and the owner of Gracie Grace. Gracie helps Label to get a fresh start by helping her to change her name to LaBelle to further disown Sable and the family. Although Label's leaving took quite the toll on Sable, not everything was dismal. Sable was often able to confide in Tom Nook, who is presumably quite close in age to Sable. The player is able to discover that Nook and Sable would often sit under the town's stars at night and create their own designs together during this time. Nook leaving for the city to pursue his dreams of being an entrepreneur left Sable quite alone. Trying to maintain the relationship, Nook and Sable exchanged letters and Nook even remembered Sable's birthday when she was working too much to remember it herself. On this birthday, Nook sent Sable a pair of burnt orange sewing scissors, and Sable refers to them fondly and claims they were the best scissors she ever had, and remarks she cries over them when she looks at them. After making very little in the city and being gypped out of a big break entrepreneurial deal by a partner, Nook moves back to the town a changed to Nookie. Now cold, bitter, and distrustful, Nook blows off Sable's attempts of reconnecting and focuses his efforts on growing his empire of Nook shopping. During the latter part of City Folk's story arc, LaBelle begins to write Mabel and tries to salvage their relationship, as they were not the ones to have the disagreement in the first place. This leaves Mabel upset and down when the player tries to talk to her during those times. Traveling to the city to talk to LaBelle about it, at this point she admits she was in the wrong for the disagreement and wants to repair the damages she has caused to both sisters. City Folk's story arc for the sisters concludes with Mabel wishing Sable and LaBelle would reconnect, or at least talk. In New Leaf, some progress has been made for the sisters. LaBelle has moved back to the town and now works in the Able Sisters Accessories Department which leads us to believe that Sable and LaBelle have made the majority of amends, but still some friction as LaBelle still uses her designer name LaBelle instead of her given name Label. Although in New Horizons, we see Label using Label and instead calling her fashion line LaBelle, although she comes and goes from the island and does not work in the Able Sisters. Sable laments in New Horizons that she and Mabel miss Label, but are really proud of her for continuing to chase her dreams. New Horizons also does not offer any story arc between Sable and Nook, or really any story arc for the sisters at all. While some argue that the Able sisters' background is too dark for a kid's game, the attention to details that Nintendo has introduced to their game, making it lovable and interesting, is a selling point for most consumers. As many, I hope to see the continuation of the sisters' story in upcoming games, and wish them good luck in the meantime. 
Hearing the advanced and layered story of Sable and her sisters might lead one to wonder where they too can find the inside loop of their most favorite and lovable NPCs. Starting in Wild World and continuing with every Animal Crossing title after, Nintendo developers instated the concept of episodes, as termed by the fandom. These episodes of a story happen at specific times in the Animal Crossing year and have certain triggers to make them happen. They start with an NPC having a thought bubble above their head and melancholy sighs. You can then go and talk to them and inquire about what's setting their mood this way. This is how you trigger the story of the Able sisters, Tom Nook's relationship with Sable, and much more. Now I'd like to talk to you about the much more part of these episodes. With the Able sisters taking up the majority of the episodes in Wild World, 34 by my count, my next favorite episode of Backstory is Blathers's, and to some extent, Brewster. Ten days after the first Sunday in April, in the middle of a Blathers episode, Blathers begins to describe how he met Brewster. While Blathers was born and raised in the center of the big city, Blathers works on his college education on the outskirts of the city, where he meets Brewster, who is owning and running his own coffee shop. Blathers continues, and I quote, I was still very young at the time, just a spring owl attending university. I was working towards a deadline on my thesis and having a rough time of it. I went all over town from cafe to cafe, writing in absolute fervor, but I still couldn't complete it. With each passing day, I became more frustrated. And then, as I descended into madness, the owner of a cafe said to me, There's nothing more bitter or tragic than a rushed cup of coffee. Such a simple comment, really, but it struck me to the very core, what? It cut through the pall of anger and opened my eyes to what I was doing. Making coffee is more than just pouring hot water over grounds, you see. It's about taking one's time to coax the flavor out of the savory bean. A thesis is quite the same way. He taught me that my brain was like his coffee beans, end quote. Blathers then proceeds to describe how Brewster later lost his shop due to financial ruin, and Blathers offered for Brewster to come open up his cafe in the museum. As Nintendo never tells their characters' stories in novel fashion, I set out through the backwaters of Wattpad to find the complete story of Blathers, inspired and incorporating canon evidence from the game in their story. Lo and behold, I found a writer by the name of Mav R, screen handle, at ad underscore Meloria. Her work of Hope is a Thing with Feathers is a beautiful read, whether you are a Blathers fan or not. She wrote it after her roaring success with fanfic novel The Able Sisters and the release of New Horizons during the update's publishing of Hope is a Thing with Feathers brought it more attention than she originally planned. Mauve writes about Blathers' childhood in his penthouse apartment living with parents and younger sister Celeste. Blathers' mom would often hide single bell store trinkets and fake coins in Blathers' roof playground sandbox, which inspired him to become an archaeologist. After struggling with the nocturnalness and bitter taste of black coffee all throughout his bachelor's and master's years of college, Blathers finally tries a coffee shop's blend made especially for Blathers. The coffee shop? The Roost. The barista? Brewster. The two grew close together as Brewster worked to perfect his blend and Blathers on his doctorates, but it was not to last as hardship befell them both. Brewster was deeper into financial debt, Brewster was deeper into financial debt, and Blathers had had a heartbreaking conversation with his favorite professor. His professor broke it to Blathers that archaeology is a painfully niche field and is hard to break into. And at this point, the professor makes a suggestion that Blathers could be a museum curator instead. Crushed that his professor thinks that he couldn't be an archaeologist as he had dreamed his whole life, about halfway through his doctorates, Blathers comes to the realization that his professor's idea was right, and reluctantly decides to pursue being a curator for faraway museum after graduating. But Blathers doesn't even get that far, as a new spot in small town animal village opened up before he could finish his master's. As Blathers contemplates whether he should take it or not, Brewster is forced to close his cafe and move back home to his parents. Without his best friend and childhood dream to cheer him on, Blathers accepts the position as curator at Animal Village and doesn't finish his doctorate. While the villagers and mayor of Animal Village are nice enough, Blathers still misses the city and his friend. There's not even enough business at the museum to keep him occupied. An idea finally comes to Blathers to open a cafe in the museum to bring more villagers into the museum and more donations as well. After reaching out to Mayor Tortimer and Brewster, finally Brewster and Blathers are reunited at long last. This contentment is better than before, but still not perfect. Making the accommodation to have a planetarium built, complete with state-of-the-art telescope, Blathers makes the invitation to astronomy train Celeste to come join him in Animal Village. And with that, the story of Hope is a Thing with Feathers practically comes to a satisfactory end, save for an addendum for New Horizons. 
I don't do Mob R's story enough justice as she succeeded with making the characters more lovable, relatable, and more personable than ever before. This read comes highly recommended from me, as well as their story, The Able Sisters. Did you have fun? Um, I hope you like this video. I know I like making it. Um, Beignet liked helping me make it. Can you say hi, Beignet? Beignet would like to remind you to like, subscribe, and basically just interact with the video. Um, oh, oh, I gotta go. She's trying to jump. <laughs>